Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to take a look at day three of the Warhammer Fest online extravaganza. I got all the words wrong in the intro there, and I didn't know where to go with it, so I just, I just, I just went with it. And you know what? Terrible intro. One out of ten would not do again, except I probably will because I mess these up constantly. So yesterday we had day three. It was the Black Library Day, and you know what? Actually, it was really good. <laughs> it was. I would argue. I would argue better than the 40k day we had we had uh, on, on Tuesday, which is weird and not something I was expecting to actually say, but there you go. That's just how this has worked out by the look of things. So, what do we have in store this time round? Well, what we have is, uh, is Gaunt's Ghosts. It's not just, like, another book, though. It's not just another book, good though that would be. It's new miniatures. We have now got... Plastic Gaunt's Ghost. And you know what? You know what? These lads look pretty damn good to me. This is the kind of thing that I want to see for all Imperial Guard. This is the kind of thing that I want for that range. They... They just... So, look how crisp. Look how crisp and clean. Look how crisp and clean that is. That is quality. The cloaks are really, really nicely sculpted. You've got some really nice folds. There's not really anything in the way of just, like, jagged straight lines going on. It all looks very natural, very very cloth-like, which, to be honest, sometimes there is a bit too much jaggedy stuff going on, or where there's, like, too much fabric. Like, the cloak will be massively thick, especially on some of the Forge World stuff. There's been some interesting choices when it comes to uh, to cloth simulation, if you will, in, uh, in some of their models. But these, no, no. So, so nicely done, so clean. Not painted clean, obviously. There's a bit of mud on the bottom of the cloaks, which is a nice touch. But yeah, th these just look, they look great. These are really, really nice models. They've done a good job with these. And much though I like seeing this, what I really want to see is, uh, well, I want to see this, but for the entirety of the Imperial Guard infantry. I genuinely think this is a really good reveal. These are some really nice models. And it it kind of... I don't know. I'm a, su I'm a bit surprised that these were shown off as part of the Black Library thing. I mean, I th suppose technically, yes, they are characters from a beloved series. And as such, it, it does kind of make sense to put them in the Black Library section. But at the same time, it felt like the 40k reveal was a little sparse. And so having these show up yesterday was like, oh my god, wait... Wait, why weren't these why weren't these shown off yesterday with the other 40k stuff? I don't know. I, I I guess it does make sense, but I feel like a lot of the a lot of the uh, dissatisfaction and 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 not goodwill that was displayed might have been kind of offset if we'd had I mean what like six nice new Imperial Guard models that happen to be of beloved characters that like from a series that is responsible for getting a significant number of people into this hobby. Like, it, it, it holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. That's, I mean, that's the way you win approval. That's the way you get people excited and happy about what you're doing, surely. But yeah, they just look, they just look so good. So yeah, so yeah, you've got, uh, you've got Ibram Gaunt right here. And this is spoiler free. So if you're not aware of who these people are, then that's, that's fine. So you can go and start reading the books. Uh, so uh, having been a rising star under the command of Imperial Warmaster Slado, the freshly appointed... Colonel Commissar was set to command three newly founded Astro Militarum regiments from the forest world of Tanith. So the man himself, again, looks really solid. No tactical rock this time. There is a tactical tree, though. So similar theme, different approach. Uh, we've also we've also got Colonel Colm Corbeck. That is a solid model. That is quality. I really like that. I really like that. The uh the like the the wood detail on the last gun is really nicely done. It looks really good. It's it's got the the right kind of. It just looks very natural. It looks like a refined kind of uh, almost like a collector's piece weapon in a weird way. But it does look solid. It does look absolutely solid. Similar pose as uh, as Gaunt, which is perhaps a little disappointing, just because. One of them is stepping on a bit of root with one foot, the other one's stepping on a bit of tree with the other foot. And it, I don't know. Don't know that it necessarily needed to be there. I don't think it adds all that much. But then again, it doesn't really take anything away either. And I think with the the whole squad together, you're not going to notice that it's kind of like 
same pose but reversed. But again, that is a super solid miniature. I feel like the arms are done really nicely. And actually, the the two finger point there, that hand, that hand looks really good. There's been some weird elongated finger nonsense going on with some uh, some human models recently. I'm looking at you, Dog Martyr, with your weird Jack Skellington hands. Uh, but that that feels like it's been like it, it feels like it's the right size. Feels proportional. The finger on the trigger looks a little long in comparison, but then again, it's a different pose. It's it's like in a different position, and so it might just be that that's making it look like that. I feel like like hands holding guns, especially finger on trigger poses, are actually a little bit more difficult to pull off because you've got that you've got that kind of space between the knuckle and the gap between the fingers that is there, but is not obvious when you're looking at a hand from like the direction of the palm. So with his pointing hand, because you're looking at his fist from like the inside of the hand, you don't have that that section of, of like skin between the knuckle and the split between the fingers. And then when you look at that and then compare it to the other hand, because you have got that section, it makes the hand look a little bit longer than it actually is, which I think I, I think sometimes contributes to how weird and elongated some of them look occasionally. But yeah, I, I think that looks really, really good. I think they all do. Major, I've forgotten how to pronounce his first name, Ron. I always do that. I can't pronounce anyone's names, though, let's be honest. <laughs> if you've been here any length of time, you know full well the pronunciation of anything is not my strong suit. I do like that pose. That That's a, that's, that's a strong pose. There's like a, a casual, I'm going to cut you attitude there that I, <laughs> that I quite like. Again, I think they've done a good job. Like the faces on these, the faces on these are really good. We should we should mention that there's there's uh yeah I don't think there's a bad head amongst this lot. And since there's no reason for them to be really wearing helmets, I I I, I wouldn't even wouldn't even wouldn't even replace the head with a helmet. The faces look that good. Again, I really like how they've done that cloak. The cloak looks really solid. Next up, we have Master Sniper Larkin, and that is a quality sniper model. That is solid. The tree sticking out the side is a bit obtrusive in a way. I almost feel like I would prefer it if he was behind it, but then that would obscure a lot of the model, and so that may not look actually all that good on, on reflection, having just said it and then walked it back immediately. But yeah, the the, the gun looks really good. I like the, the cloth wrapped around wrapped around it. I just, I just like all of these. I like all of them. There's a level of detail here that it just feels like is totally lacking in the vast majority of the Imperial Guard range. And looking at this makes me want this level of like crisp detail and and just like the the difference in posing and just the overall presentation on these is just way better. Than, than anything we currently have access to outside of, of Death Corps of Krieg, right? Outside of the Katajan characters that we've had over the last couple of years. It's just a step above what is currently for sale for the Imperial Guard as a whole, and it just makes me just makes me want this, but but for, for, for all of it. We've also got Try Again Bragg with his... Uh, his <laughs> it's autocannon, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I again, again, looks really really good. I really like the head and neck on this one. Clearly a massively muscly fella, as you can see, but uh, yeah, the way he's holding the gun and the, look at the girth on them biceps. The lad lifts. You know he lifts. It's a good pose as well. Nice standing, but not like completely static. He's It, it looks like he's lighting someone up and I think they pulled that off really, really well. I do love the fact that <laughs> the Try Again Brag is big enough to hold heavy weaponry without the need of a tripod, but you can't actually aim with it. That's an excellent character trait. It'd be very easy to get someone who's like massively beefy to not just hold the weapon, but be like an absolute legend with it. it gives it that nice bit of comedic relief that, yeah, you can, you can hold a massive heavy weapon, but uh, that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to hit anyone with it, so... <laughs> Why are you doing it? Oh, it's because you can. Okay. And finally, we've got Sergeant Scout McCall, and that is a quality, quality pose, quality model. The integration of the tree there onto the base, like actually having him stand fully on it, holding onto it, 
I really like that. That's a really nice way of using that. It does feel like these are more aimed towards like display pieces than gaming pieces necessarily, but you know what? I, I mean, when it looks that good, do you, do you care? Do you really care? And you could you could adapt that if you really wanted to, but I think that's a really strong, solid pose. Again, the wood grain on the stock of the, of the last gun is really nice. Another well-sculpted face as well. And I like the little detail of the cloak being damaged at the bottom. You get a nice feel for like the, the highlights on the, the black cloth as well on that one. Like it's present on all of them, but there's something about the way this one's posed and the fact that they've just done like a, a face on picture of it that yeah, it, it it really it really works. It looks really good. The little dog tags peeking out of the top as well is a nice touch. Altogether, pretty solid. Pretty damn solid Corn's Ghosts. <laughs> Just came out of nowhere as well. I don't think anyone was sitting there going, "Oh yeah, well they're definitely gonna, they're definitely gonna do a do a plastic set of Gorn's Ghost models." Absolutely. I don't think any of us were thinking that was gonna happen, but but it has, which is quality. So yeah, six stunning miniatures that perfectly encapsulate the characters they represent. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair. I think that's fair comment. And now it's all about the books, but. But there's a bunch of Sabat World stuff. So there's the, uh, the <laughs> again, the Vincular Insurgency, which does look very fancy. I like the uh, I like the kind of photo esque thing going on there. So this is a new novel that takes us back to the earliest days of Ibram Gaunt and the Tanith First, where you'll learn about a dark secret that's haunted them ever since. I imagine. I'm, again, I, I managed to watch part of the stream this morning, but I haven't managed to watch all of it. I know that Dan Abnett did a, an interview at the end. It must feel really weird to go back to like the start of a series. To like to, to finish to round it out, to finish it off, and then to go back to the beginning to set it all up. Because you've got all this character development that you've done over the course of writing that series. You've got Every bit of, you know, like, every single change to the group and those within it, you've got every single event that's, like, shaped and moulded them into what they are when, when you stopped writing that series, and then suddenly it's, right, go, go right back to the start, start from fresh. And you need to forget all of that, because you can't have them be the same people they were at the end, because it's the events of the books that made them into who they eventually became. And you've got to kind of leave that all behind, which is, I imagine, quite a tricky thing to do. Then again, I'm not a writer, so it could actually be quite easy. But I suspect probably not. So yeah, there's a, a mega limited edition, which includes a beautifully bound copy of the book itself, plus a whole host of extras. Also includes a data sheet with the rules to use Gorn's Ghosts in your games of Warhammer 40k. I'm When it says a mega limited edition, I would hope that it's going to be available as just a normal book. That there is a limit, like a, a mega limited edition, which, by the way, Scalper's Heaven, just throwing it out there, um, but that it'll be available in some other way as well, because if that's the only way to read it, that's naff and bad. Just bad. <laughs> we'll wait and see, though. We'll wait and see. If there's just a standard edition you can get, great. If it's only this and there's no other way of getting it, then that's a tactic that I am not in favour of, let's put it that way. And we also have uh, have Sabbath War, which is an anthology, so you can pick that up if you would like. It's also the Sabbath World's Crusade, which, by the way, this looks solid as well. Do like that. Do like that. That's a, that's a, cool, that's a cool cover, nice embossed cover. In-universe reference book, which is packed with art and background covering the sprawling Sabbath World's Crusade. It also has uh, further depth of the law, illustrations, maps, charts, etc., etc. If you get the limited edition one. Again, I don't know whether there's a standard one. They're not making that very clear, which is worrying. We also have uh, Urdash, the Serpent and the Saint. So another a new chapter in the ongoing Sabbath World saga. We have the Ibram Gaunt bookmark, which <laughs> possibly a niche, a niche product, but you know. That's fine. That's fine. I think it's like a full metal thing in it. It looks like it might be. I imagine that will go pretty quick as well. So just, just you know, you might you might want to quickly uh, grab one of those if you if you fancy it. So elsewhere in the Sabbath worlds, we've got Volpone Glory, a Blue Bloods novel, 
We've got the next Siege of Terror book, which actually I'm quite looking forward to. That is some solid cover art as well. I was under the impression that Mortarian didn't become a Demon Primarch until after the Horus Heresy, but I could be totally wrong on that. In fact, looking at this cover, it's sensible to suggest that I am in fact wrong, because otherwise it wouldn't look like that on here, unless that's something of a spoiler for how he becomes a Demon Primarch as opposed to being a just a normal lad. And again, my information it could well be very, very heavily out of date because I didn't actually finish. I'll be honest, I didn't finish the Horus Heresy series before I started the Siege of Terror series because I forgot where I was and I wasn't going to start from the beginning again because Jesus Christ, there's like fifty of those books. But we'll just skip past that. Anyway, looking forward to that. Khan is like is is absolutely one of my favourites. So I love his attitude. Great attitude in the in the uh, Horus Heresy books. We also have some more Warhammer crime stuff as well. We've got Broken City, which is a, a crime anthology. The cover of which, I have to admit, I, it, I don't think is vastly... Oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to leave... I'm just going to leave this in. I didn't think the cover was up to much, to be honest. Didn't It didn't really, like, excite me. It's like, well, it's just like a broken street grid isn't it it's a bloke's face isn't it it's a face with a collar like you would have if you was uh, if you was a private detective i just apparently am borderline blind maybe i shouldn't be trying to read maybe i should only do audio books because apparently my eyesight's shocking there's also sanction and sin which is uh, another warhammer crime anthology distinct lack currently of anything aos related lot of 40k lot of 40k a bit of Horus Heresy. No Age of Sigma, which is surprising to me. I kind of assumed we would see some Age of Sigma. There's also Grim Repast. That is a very, very good book cover as well. I have to say, for a lot of these things, they're they're like their artists are absolutely knocking it out of the park. A lot of this stuff looks really, really good. I would I would happily have that on my wall. That looks really cool to me. So yeah, another Warhammer Crime book there as well. Then we do have more 40k stuff. Okay, so Traitor Rock, a Minkalesque novel. Is she is she the one out of uh, out of Space Marine? She looks very much like the one out of Space Marine. I've not read any of those books, so I have no idea necessarily <laughs> who she is. But she does very much look. Like, no, no, she isn't, is she? Because she that that's Lieutenant Mira, isn't it? In uh, in in Space Marine, yeah, it is. It's Lieutenant. Mira. Is it Lieutenant Mira? I think it is. It's been a while since I uh, since I last played that through. Very good game. I might have to go and play that later now. Also got a new Necron book as well, The Twice Dead King. Again, pretty solid cover. Yeah. So the disgraced Necron Lord Altix must overcome his bitterness and return to the very court that cast him out to bring news of an orc invasion. Expecting the worst, Altix discovers that the orcs are the least of the horrors that face him and the entire empire of the Necrons... So, Orcs and Tyranids, then, I'm assuming. Just just guessing. You have Steel Tread. Oh, all right, sign me up for this. That Lehman Russ looks very weird. What's happened to the turret on that? What has happened to the turret on that? Why is the turret so, like, st squat and stubby? It's wider than that. It's wider and it's flatter. I have a Lehman Russ literally right in front of me, so I'm not just making that up. That's a weird interpretation of that, but sure. Head inside a mighty Lehman Russ demolisher as an outsider takes command of a dysfunctional crew of Cadians. Faced with the fight of their life under the poisonous light of the Great Rift, the disparate team must learn how to work together they to survive the conflict. I bet they don't. <laughs> well, mind you, would that be anticlimactic if you're right at the end? It's like, yeah, they will die anyway. I mean, it could happen. So there you go. Day three, actually pretty decent. Some interesting stuff on the way. Plus Gaunt's Ghosts, just out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere, Gaunt's Ghosts. Love it. Love it. I bet that's gone some way to repairing the uh, <laughs> the damage that day two caused. Well, I suppose we'll find out. Just have to glance at the comments. Which, by the way, 
quite a lot of not happy comments yesterday, and I totally understand why. But yeah, let me know what you think of all of that in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.